Here we're going to be looking at a consolidation here for less than 100% interest with an adjustment to goodwill that's applicable to the non-controlling interest portion of these consolidation. Now for example here Corporation A, the parent corporation is going to buy 80% here of Corporation B, the subsidiary, and they're going to pay $688,000 for that 80%. Now uh, that implies here that the fair value is worth $860,000 for the uh, subsidiary that's being purchased. And we calculate that by taking the $688,000 here, the 80% amount here, and I divide that point. 0.8 here and we get $860,000. So looking over here at the balance sheet here for the subsidiary or corporation B, we know the book value for the assets and liabilities, but we have to determine or estimate a fair value for the assets and liabilities here, and I've done that. So now we have to determine the fair value of the net assets. And taking the total assets here, their fair value $920,000 less the fair value of the total liabilities of $160,000, we come up with the fair value of the net assets here at $760,000. So to determine our goodwill here, we take the implied price that we calculated here at $860,000 less the fair value of our net assets of $760,000 and we get goodwill involved here for $100,000. But because we have to adjust it here for the non-controlling interest portion, we're going to actually uh, have a goodwill here of $88,000 in this consolidation. Okay, looking at a value analysis here, for our normal assignment, we would have the uh, subsidiary fair value of $860,000 here, and it would be a proportioned out 80% here to the parent of, for $688,000, and a non-controlling interest here would be 20% or $172,000. And then the fair value of the net assets, we'd also take the proportion that out here to $760,000 for the total amount here, and 80% would go to the parent here for $608,000 and then a non-controlling interest here would be for $152,000. And then taking the difference here between the fair value and the fair, uh, subsidiary fair value here and the fair value of the net assets, we would come up with our goodwill here, $20,000 for the non-controlling interest, $80,000 here for the parent uh, for a total goodwill here of $100,000. Okay, looking at our adjustment here to the non-controlling interest. Now, for example here, there's evidence that the implied fair value here of the non-controlling interest of $172,000 exceeds the real value of the share here that it should be receiving for the non-controlling interest. And we're estimating it to be $160,000 here, less than the, it's, so, we're, so we originally had $172,000, now we have $160,000. Now, it has to be pointed out here that you can never adjust here this uh, portion here of the fair value less than its share here of the fair value of the net assets. So we can never go below $152,000 in this case. So to determine our goodwill here, uh, we'll first we'll take the $160,000, our new estimate here, and add that to the parent's portion here of $688,000. So the implied total fair value of the subsidiary would be the sum of those two or $848,000. And now the fair value of the net assets, that remains the same as it's proportioned out here. So to determine our goodwill, we take the a subsidiary portion here, the non-controlling interest of $160,000 and subtract that from its proportion here of the fair value of the net assets of $152,000 and we get $8,000 here for the non-controlling interest portion. So you can see here it was lowered from $20,000 now down to $8,000 for this adjustment. Now the parent's portion stays the same in this case and that's at $80,000 here for the goodwill portion. Now the uh, uh, implied fair value or the total fair value, that has been adjusted down here too by this adjustment that's made to the subsidiary's total fair value of $848,000 less the fair value of the net assets here of seven hundred sixty. That leaves us with a total goodwill here of $88,000, which is also the sum here between the par uh, parent's portion here of $80,000 plus the non-controlling interest here portion of $8,000. 
All right, looking at our distribution schedule, well, our fair value for the subsidiary, those are the recalculated amounts here for the total fair value here, and then the parent's portion and the non-controlling interest here. And then we have to subtract out here the book value acquired here for the total equity, and the total equity in this case was $335,000. So for the total value here for the subsidiary, we'd subtract the 335 from the 848,000 and our excess of the fair value over the book value here would be $513,000. So for the parents portion, we just take 80% here of the 335,000 for that total equity and we get 268,000 here for the book value. Subtract that from the portioned amount here of $688,000 for the fair value and we get $420,000 here for the fair value over the book value or the excess here. And then the non-controlling interest we'd be just taking 20% of this $335,000 and that would give us $67,000 subtracting that from the fair value assigned here for the subsidiary amount of $160,000 that gives us $93,000 here for the excess of the fair value value over the book value. So uh, adding up here the 420 plus the 93,000 uh, we get 513,000 here for the total. Okay next we have to determine our adjustments here for our asset and liability accounts for the subsidiary and we do that by comparing the book value with the fair value that we've estimated here. So I've determined those adjustments here from the balance sheet. And we also have to include the goodwill here. And the goodwill I've got at the new calculated amount here of $88,000. So our total adjustments have to be $513,000 for the subsidiary here. And that has to match here the total excess of the fair value or the book value here for the subsidiary of $513,000. Okay, for our journal entries, first looking at our asset and liability accounts. For the um, subsidiary, you'd have to adjust the accounts up to their fair value, and then we'd combine those uh, asset and liability accounts at their fair value with the parent company's uh, asset and liability accounts. And then we'd also include this uh, new value here for a goodwill of $88,000, and our total adjustments would have to be for $513,000. Okay, now looking at our investment accounts here, we have a $688,000 investment in the sub here by the parent, and that would have to be eliminated here. So we take $420,000 here from the excess of the fair value or the book value here for the parent here, and we reduce the investment in the sub by that amount here. And then we also reduce uh, the uh, 80% here of this total equity for the uh, common stock and returned earnings here and that is equal to $268,000 so we would also reduce the investment in the sub by that amount here so the total investment in a sub is now down to zero here and then we also have to eliminate the subsidiaries equity account here uh, by that 80% amount or that $268,000 here and that would be proportioned out here between the uh, common stock and and the retained earnings here. So we'd have a total reduction here of $268,000. So that would um, be zeroed out here. And then we have this remaining $93,000 here excess for the non-controlling interest and that would go to retained earnings. So we credit or re increase our retained earnings here by $93,000. So we accounted for for this total uh, excess in the fair value over the book value of $513,000 by taking and reducing the inv investment in the sub here by $420,000 and then also increasing our retained earnings here by $93,000.